Today, I'm DIYing a fringe chandelier for my friend Alyssa. This is part of a much bigger series called Buyer DIY, which you can check out here. But this is behind the DIY. All the materials and a full step-by-step -step can be found at thecoralchannel.com. Before we get into this, guys, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do and give us that lovely support. The first step to building our fringe chandelier is you're gonna need to find a base. I've sourced this beautiful retro-looking lamp. Source a light that has some kind of lip on it or some kind of siding so that you can attach your edge banding and your fringe to it. Using an awl and a hammer, you wanna poke four holes equally spaced around the rim of the lampshade. I'm basically just using north, east, south, and west. Ta-da! Okay, so now I have four holes. Before you spray paint, make sure you use a 300 grit sandpaper and you're gonna lightly sand the lampshade down. This is going to rough up the metal, giving something for that spray paint to hold onto. It's like rubbing the belly of the light. There you are, sweet one. I'm not going to forget about the base. I actually want to spray paint this as well. <laughs> Look at you all ready to be spray painted. We need to protect our table surface. I'm going to use brown paper. So to protect the cord of my lamp, I'm just gonna cover it with some painter's tape. I'm actually just gonna use the bag that this light came in and I'm gonna wrap the cords so I don't have to use as much tape. Well, I'm improvising here. I'm hoping that this is gonna work. Give it a good shake. I'm spray painting the lamp and the ceiling base gold. This is not a part of the DIY that you wanna rush. I know it's super easy to just go and get the whole thing covered, but it's all about patience. It's about being zen. Also, when spray painting, it's always good to be in a well-ventilated space or take it outside. A quick tip, you don't want to spray paint in one section and hold it there because all that paint is gonna to start to pool and run down. So I'm doing just nice spritz evenly across in sweeping motions. I'm trying to stay about half a foot away from it at all times. All right, set this aside and let this dry. I'm going to move on to my tiered frame, which I'm using these wood embroidery hoops. Now I have two sizes here. I have a six and a half and I have a 10 and a half. So I actually don't need the top embroidery frame. So I'm just gonna just, uh, pop, yeah, good, like that. Like I did on my lamp, I'm going to mark four points. I'm just basically marking my north, south, east, west. What I'm doing is using a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than the twine that I'm using. This way, the twine can fit through the hole and drill on through. Now I'm just drilling holes through my six and a half inch hoop. Now we're going to connect these two. Oh, I'm really good at this, by the way. Good. All right, so my lamp is dry. Hello. You wanna make sure you suspend your lamp from an elevated surface. It's gonna make this DIY a lot easier. Kinda of looks like a UFO right now. Now it's time to attach those hoops to the base of your lamp. You wanna measure out four 18 inch strips of your twine. I'm using a leather twine. What I love about it is that it's super grippy and it's really easy to work with. I'm going to be threading this through and then I'm just gonna tie it. And then let's do the rest. I always feel good about a double knot. Okay, so we have our four strings. We're going to attach our second tier. Try to make these all three inches apart from each other. And I'm just gonna wrap it maybe twice around, maybe three, feeling adventurous. Obviously, this doesn't look like it's hanging straight, which is why I'm not tying it off. It makes it a little bit easier to adjust. Adjust your hoop until it's level, and then I tied it off with a knot. Moving on, last hoop. That's actually looking, it's looking pretty good. Make sure you trim any excess twine that might be sticking out. Just take some scissors and snip, snip away. Because my lamp kind of had an inward shape, I wanted to make sure I could flatten it out. So I'm taking tin snips, I'm cutting every four inches around, and what it does is it just snips right through the metal. You wanna be careful though, because it can be a bit sharp, so use with caution. And then using some pliers to flatten it out. 
This is going to ensure that I can have a flat rim to apply my fringe and my edge bathing later on. We're going with fringe, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm doing is applying hot glue gun to the smaller embroidery hoop first and then slowly starting to attach the rim of my fringe. I'm working in small sections as I go along, making sure that it's perfectly aligned and looking good. It's like a beautiful little dress, little hula. <laughs> because I did them three inches apart, now I have a nice overhang. You want to repeat this step all the way up each embroidery hoop and on the rim of your lampshade. It's looking so good. What I sourced was this beautiful metal decorative trim. This is what's going to make this project a winning piece. You can almost even make this into a crown. So, one for me, one for you. Hot glue the decorative trim to the outside layer of the fringe, covering any holes or seams for a clean finish. Doing fine. Ta-da! Bum, 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 bum. <sighs> you take my breath away. I sourced a beautiful ceiling molding that's gonna be trim right around the light. It gave it some French elegance. Now you just need to hang your light. I'm using an LED bulb to reduce the heat. The bulb should not come in contact with the fringe source, a bulb that's gonna be safe for your lamp. And there you have it, your own fringe chandelier. The fringe looks beautiful, it looks elegant. I like the edge banding. And you get to know that you made it yourself. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you love this project, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and let me know what color you would have gone for for your fringe chandelier. And I will see you next week.